Madison. Senator Hawley, you're recognized for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to all of the witnesses for being here. Uh, Director Breer, if I could just start with you. How familiar are you with the case Missouri versus Biden? Not, not really familiar. Well, I, I I've got it. I the outline, but. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, I'm aware of it, but I don't, I don't know in depth. You say you're aware of it. What, what are you aware of? Um, I'm aware of the, the context around um, misinformation, disinformation online. So it, Missouri versus Biden is the United States District Court and then the United States Court of Appeals that ruled in both cases that the United States government violated the First Amendment by coercing and censoring speech and using the biggest corporations in the world to do it. And I'm asking you about it because a large portion of the case concerns CISA. So let me just read some of the relevant portions since you say you're not too familiar with it. This is from the court's opinion. CISA, working in close connection with the FBI, held regular industry meetings with the platforms, that's the social media platforms, concerning their moderation policies, pushing them to adopt CISA's proposed practices for addressing misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. CISA also engaged in switchboarding operations, meaning that CISA officials acted as intermediaries for third parties by forwarding flag content from them to the platforms. Like the CDC did for COVID-related claims, CISA told the platforms whether certain election-related claims were true or false. The court goes on, CISA violated the First Amendment. CISA was the primary facilitator of the FBI's interaction with the social media platforms and worked in close coordination with the FBI to push the platforms to change their policies. CISA also used its frequent interactions with social media platforms to push them to adopt more restrictive policies, and CISA affirmatively told them repeatedly what content was true or false and what needed to be taken down. So what the court found is, and there are voluminous findings here, both in the opinion and in the record, is that the government acting through a series of agencies, including the one that you are a part of, used its power to go after protected First Amendment speech in a way that directly violates the First Amendment. Now, you have a long record of, of, of government service. I can't imagine that this is what you signed up to do. L let me just ask you first, you weren't in any way involved in any of the activities described by the court in these cases, were you? Um, I was, uh, I will, I work physical security for the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency. So I come in each and every day and I'm focused on public gathering events, federal facilities, security, and the sectors to ensure that they have physical security measures in place. Okay, that good. So my you, focus, that is my expertise. You, you, did, you weren't meeting with, with the executives or, or counterparts at any of these social media companies as, no. as described by the court, good. Now, let, let me just ask you, I mean, do you think that this is consistent with CISA's mission, the use of coercive power to try and censor American speech in a way that violates the First Amendment of the United States Constitution? That's not the way the agency that I work for operates. Well, are you saying it's not how it should operate? Because two courts have found it is, it, it, it is how it's operating. I mean, that's the problem. Would you agree with me that that's a problem when federal courts find that the First Amendment has been violated by a federal agency using federal power to censor American speech? I mean, would you agree that's a problem? I don't have the expertise or knowledge to comment on that. But would you agree it's a problem when the First Amendment's violated? How about that? Yes. And would you agree it's a problem when the federal government violates the First Amendment? Yes. Okay, and when you say that it's not what the agency is doing, I mean, you would say that this is not, this sort of activity, the violation of the First Amendment is not what CISA ought to be doing. Is that fair to say? I'm saying I don't have knowledge of that. Well, here's, I guess, my point to you, Director Brior. I appreciate the work that you do and your long service, uh, record of service to this country. I, I just think it's important that we sent this body, send the message to every agency that was involved in this. It is a serious thing to violate the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. It is a very serious thing. There is nothing more foundational to our democracy than the freedom of speech. And what these courts found is the federal government systematically, not accidentally, not oops, we went too far, systematically over a period of months and years 
set out to violate the First Amendment speech of ordinary Americans, including those in my home state of Missouri. And this is all on the record. In fact, my state brought the suit. So that's a pretty big deal. And I'm pretty upset about it. You're not the first person I've asked about it, and I promise you, you won't be the last. But I just want to send the message, and maybe you can take this message back to your agency, that this is not acceptable behavior, not by a long shot. If the federal government can tell people and can use the most powerful corporations in the world, in the world, to shut down speech it doesn't like on a variety of topics, elections, COVID, school boards, the Hunter Biden laptop story, I mean, pick it. There is so much censorship that this, these courts have found. We've got a serious problem that goes right to the heart of our democracy, and that's a serious issue for me. Um, Director Klein, let me ask you a question here in just my remaining uh, few seconds. You noted in your written testimony that FPS protects federal facilities at the U.S.-Mexico border. Have I got that right? Yes, sir. So let me just ask you, given the, the unprecedented surge in illegal immigration that we're seeing, um, let me ask you two things here, time permitting. The first one is, we've had multiple DHS whistleblowers who are special investigators within DHS come forward to my office and I think others and allege that they were pulled off of their assignments investigating child abuse, child trafficking, fentanyl. They were pulled off of that and sent to the southern border in order to perform, in their words, menial tasks. Uh, I just want to know, have any FPS officers, to your knowledge, been reassigned to the southern border to help with migrant processing? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we do have uh, a number of FPS officers that are supporting CBP at the southern border in two locations. Um, uh, and that's, that's going on today. When you say assisting, assisting with processing? Not processing. Let me explain what they're doing. So the Border Patrol, the goal is for us to support the Border Patrol so they can go back to do the work of the border. So we, our officers are transporting people to hospital appointments, to medical visits, to emergency rooms uh, that may need to, for treatment. So the Border Patrol doesn't have to do that. They can focus on the border and we're supporting them and escorting people to these appointments. If, if I could just ask, where, where are these folks coming from who are, who are transporting your agents? Where are they being taken from if they're, if they're now running people back and forth to the hospital and appointments and so forth? Uh, various locations throughout the country. For, for example? Uh, Boston, Chicago. What would they otherwise be doing in those locations? Federal facility protection. So they're, they're being pulled off of federal facility protection in order to go to the border and to take migrants to appointments? Uh, our, our goal is to support the Border Patrol. They, they have supported us in a number of occasions. When they call and ask for help, can you provide, and, and it's a very small number of officers that we're providing to them, can you provide help or a need for help, and we're going to help them because they've helped us in the past. Well, I think that's important testimony, Director Klein. I'm grateful that you've given it, and sadly, it, it tracks exactly with what whistleblowers at DHS have told us that they're being asked to do. They're being taken off of their assignments, and they're being asked to do exactly what you just described, which is to run people back and forth, uh, to sit to, and one, one agent said that he was being asked to make sandwiches for illegal migrants. I mean, I have to say, I think it's kind of a problem when people aren't investigating child exploitation so that they can make sandwiches. And frankly, when your agents, who provide absolutely vital security services, are being used to, to run people back and forth to appointments. I mean, that's outrageous. That's absolutely outrageous. Obviously, it's not your fault, but uh, I just, I'm, I'm sorry that you're in that position. And I just register again, I mean, our border's in a state of crisis, and I think this is unbelievable. Thank you for your testimony. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I realize I'm over time. Thank you, uh, Senator Hawley. Mr. Briar, in... Uh